Hi, welcome back to Neural Splendor. Today we're going to finish our tutorial on how to troubleshoot fault code 559 low fuel pressure when it relates to the ISX 15 or ISX 12 common rail platform. It's the troubleshooting for the 22 and 2350 are it's very very similar. There might be some differences in the flows. We're going to be troubleshooting a 2250. The driver's complaint was when he'd hit a hill and start working the engine, the yellow check engine light would come on. He topped the hill. When he wasn't pulling hard any longer, the check engine light would go off. When we hooked up Cummins Insight, the software we use, and checked, he had 52 inactive fault codes for 559. He had already had his fuel filters changed because he had called in and we sent him to a shop and had him replace both fuel filters, the one on the engine and the frame. So we figured we we're going to be doing a little more troubleshooting than just uh, changing the fuel filters. So one of the things we're going to be checking that I wanted to show you so you understand is we're going to be checking when we check injector flow. This is the injector connector and this is the port where the fuel comes into the injector and this is how this sits in the engine and this connection right here has to be able to hold 30,000 PSI so this is torqued into the head a nut goes over here and torques it in and this is basically crushed into this and on your heavy duty engines if you change an injector you have to change the connector the only engine you can reuse this connector on, if it looks okay when you inspect it, is the B series engines. Okay, let's get started. The thing we're going to do is install the copy check fitting at port 4 in the photo, and then we're going to put our dump hose on. That's the one with the 43,000th orifice, and we'll throw that into an empty 5 gallon pail. That again is going to simulate the fuel system working hard. Then down by the gear pump and we'll be installing our test fitting at number two port. That's going to give us total fuel restriction. We'll start the engine and throttle it up. Our maximum allowed restriction is 10 inches of mercury. If we have more than 10 inches of mercury, we're going to go back to the right to port 3 and we are going to remove the check valve that is underneath that fitting and make sure that there's no dirt or debris stuck in that port. There shouldn't be because fitting number 3 is coming from the fuel filter on the frame. We have had a couple fuel filters on the frame where the head of the filter had leaves or garbage up inside the head. So if your restriction is high at two, back up to your filter on the frame. If it's got a test fitting, check it. If it doesn't, you'll have to figure out a way to break into that to check and see or bypass around it. Uh, you've still got the filter on the engine, so you're not da going to damage your injectors at all. If you're not sure, bypass that frame filter and see if your restriction at fitting number two comes down. Again, 10 inches at high RPM with your 43,000 line on there dumping fuel, 10 inches is the maximum you're allowed. The next thing we're going to do is go up to the fuel filter head. You're going to pull the covers off of fitting two and three, and you're going to put on your test gauge. You'll start the engine. You can leave the line on number four dumping fuel at not going to affect this and you'll check the pressure drop across that filter 10 pounds is the maximum allowed a new filter usually has one or two pounds a used one usually five to six if that all checks out the next thing you're going to do is take the pressure gauge off you're going to take your quick check fitting off of port four where you're dumping fuel into the bucket you're going to put a test fitting in fitting one and you're going to turn the key on but not start it and you're going to check the pressure of the electric lift pump because remember the electric lift pump runs at key on you do not start the engine because you're going to put a gauge that's 
0 to 30 PSI on the test fitting in one. If you start the engine, the gauge is going to blow up because you got about 185 PSI in that housing. So again, when you're testing at fitting one, key on, do not start it, 30 pound gauge, and you're going to be checking the lift pump pressure, 10 pounds a minimum. If you don't have that, and the rest of the fuel system is good in terms of restriction, you'll need to replace the electric lift pump. Now before we go any farther, the electric lift pump is not what's causing his 559 fault codes. But it does prime the fuel filters when you replace them. So if the electric lift pump isn't doing its job, it needs to be replaced. Now if we know that we have sufficient gear pump pressure that we've measured at the filter head when we're doing drop, that pressure from that filter comes down to where this green arrow is. This fitting, don't forget, has a filter in it. So if that filter plugs up, it can cause low flow into the pump head. And there's, on the right, is the uh, filter that is pressed into that fitting. So you would just replace the fitting if the filter is blocked. So that's one thing you want to check. Also, the actuator housing bolts to the back of the pump, which is where the actuator bolts into, it has its own internal check valve, and the newer ones have a screen, and they can plug up as well, or that internal check valve can fail. So the actual actuator housing on the back of the pump head can be what causes 559 faults. We're going to keep this in mind, but at this point we're going to continue on with the troubleshooting and we'll check all of our other values and areas we need to test. If those all test out okay, we would come back and suspect either the actuator housing or the actuator itself. I have seen both cause low fuel pressure. We're going to be checking return flows. This is the return manifold marked 1, 2, and 3. 4 is the drain line port uh, fitting that goes to the number 10 hose that goes back to the tank. So 316, 4618 is the tool you need. I'm going to show you at the end of this video, video a little trick tool you can make so you don't have to buy that. Here in terms of where we're going to start checking, I guess it's sort of pick your poison. Uh, we're going to start with number two, that's the injector return line. So we're going to put our test fitting in number two. We're going to take the banjo fitting out of number two and screw that brass fitting that is deadheaded in so that all we're measuring in the beaker that the line coming off of it goes into is the return fuel coming back up that line from the head, the bag of the cylinder head and your maximum uh, return flow from the injectors and this is all six is 200 milliliters in 60 seconds so if you get up to 180 185 190 then you probably need to start blocking off injectors in the rail with the block off tools and you block off one injector and then check your flow again for your 60 seconds and see where you're at. You keep blocking one off at a time and if you've got one injector that's the problem when you hit that injector your flow is going to drop down considerably. It might drop down to a hundred or to 80. So typically from injectors you usually see around 100 cc's return. Remember if that connector is not torqued properly, you can lose fuel out of that joint and that goes right into the return. So you might think that the injector is the problem when it's actually that pinch tube, they call it a pinch tube, or the connector that um, the high pressure fuel has to go through to get to the injector itself. Once we're done checking the injector flows, we would go to uh, fitting number one, which is the pump head return flow. That's the pump, uh, part of the pump that makes the high pressure fuel. The pump head return flow, the maximum allowed is 525 milliliters 
or 8 ounces in 30 seconds. And that's with the engine running. All of these tests, the return flow tests, are done using Insight to raise the fuel pressure up to about 27,000 pounds. At the end of this video, I'll tell you a little trick you can do if you don't have Insight to cheat the, uh, the pump so that it gives you the high pressure fuel. If that flow was in line, then we would check port number three. However, we would not check it at the port. We would go up to the rail because port number three is the pop-off valve, the high pressure pop-off valve in a rail. And you are only allowed 10 drops in 60 seconds of running out of that valve or it has failed. And here we are putting a test tool into the pop-off valve on the rail or the emergency pressure relief and you notice that we're not using the same tool this tool is drilled through but has no side drillings because we do not want to measure what's in the line in this case we want to measure what's coming out of that high pressure relief because it's such a small amount of fuel we check it right at the relief so there should be no pressure in this when you take that banjo out because this again is the high pressure relief valve on the rail. 10 drops in 60 seconds and that's with the rail pressure 27,000 using Insight to raise it. Last test we're going to do we have to remove all the fuel lines and block off the common rail. One of the ports on the common rail we install this high pressure flow device. It maintains high pressure in the rail, it has a pop-off pressure, and once you reach that pop-off pressure, then fuel will come out the drain hose into our graduated container. This measures how effective the pump is at making the amount of flow we need. Here we are measuring injector return flow. When we finished this test, we had under 100 milliliters. If you remember, injector return flow could be a maximum of 200 with all six injectors. We had about 80 to 90, so our injectors and our connector connections and the injectors themselves were in good shape. In our last check, we were checking pump head return flow, and we aren't even through with the test, and we're well over 500 failed pump head and check the cam lobes they look good the bores look good we're ready to put that new head on open up your new pump head you have to use the old springs over they snap on the pumping chambers will be there the pistons will be in it just have to bolt the actuator housing on and then install it into the pump bore pull your tappets and check your cam on the bottom left you see a tappet we pulled out of an engine and this is all that was left of it. The pump was trashed. The main bearings were trashed. Pretty severe damage to the engine. Above that is the same roller with a new pin. To the right is the updated replacement roller with the diamond light -like coating pins and rollers in it. If your engine's older than 2013, it would be a good idea to call and check with Cummins. They'll need the engine serial number to see if it requires these. All the campaigns should be done on these so your engine should have had that done. You should have got a recall letter if in fact you needed to have those uh, new style tappets and rollers put in. I note the engine that we pulled that tappet out of that's all destroyed that engine had 559 low fuel pressure faults. Other than that no one knew this was going on. By the time the tap it gets to this point, there is severe damage in the engine. If you have one of these engines and you're not sure if it's got new style tappets, if the engine's earlier than 2014, you can call your local Cummins distributor, give them your engine number, and they can check and see if, in fact, your engine was campaigned. They can also tell you the first engine number that Cummins put the new diamond light -like coating tappets in, which have no problems at all. And if your engine number is earlier than that, you'll have to get it checked if you're not sure if it was campaigned. I hope you enjoyed this uh, troubleshooting 559 fall in an ISX engine. 
The couple tips I wanted to give you at the end of the video. Number one is if you don't have insight, if you unplug the fuel actuator, harness the pump will pump maximum rail pressure. You are going to open the bypass valve so you can't measure your 10 drops when you're doing that. You have to have insight to do that. Insight controls how much pressure you have when you unplug that actuator harness. The pump pumps the maximum it can pump. Second, you can take a banjo fitting, the same fittings that screw into that return manifold. You can braze the end of it shut, drill a hole in the back side where the wrench head is, a 5 16 hole, tap it to eighth inch pipe, put a barb fitting in, and you can use that for measuring your return flows in that manifold. We didn't go over the flow test for the high pressure dump that bolts on to the common rail when we blocked off all the other ports and had that long tool on. That is a two 15 second cranking test only and once you finish that test you have to look at a graph you have to look at cranking speed versus the amount of fluid that you collected a ballpark good number is 30 seconds of cranking at 150 rpm and that's your average rpm these crank at so 30 seconds of cranking at 150 rpm you need to have a minimum of 160 155 160 milliliters of fuel collected and that is borderline passing for the flow capacity when the pump has to pump under pressure in our case our pump head was failed we didn't even we did not even uh, achieve 80 milliliters of fuel in that last cranking test and our return fuel was out the roof so something failed in that pump head and the fuel that should have been going to the rail was going out the return thank you for uh, watching this and there'll be a lot more good stuff coming on neural splendor see you next time